The following is a production of Learfield Sports. Presented by North Carolina's Touchstone Energy Cooperatives. Proud to sponsor Wolfpack Athletics. And by Coke Zero. Real Coke taste. Zero calories. You're invited to stay with us over the next 30 minutes for the Dave Doran Show. Thank you so much for joining us. We're the head coach of the Wolfpack, Dave Doran. I'm Tony Haynes. NC State saw its seven-game winning streak come to an end on Saturday afternoon with a hard-fought 20-13 loss to the Louisville Cardinals. Anytime you lose by a touchdown or less, Coach, it's easy to lament maybe two or three plays here and there that ultimately made the difference. For you, what were those plays? Uh, two turnovers on offense, you know, hurt us. One of them was inside the five-yard line, and, and that's points on the board. Obviously, the, the one long run we gave up for a touchdown was a, a miscommunication and a missed tackle on the same play. Um, but like you said, you know, anytime you play in a tight game like that, there's there's going to be a handful of plays on both sides of the ball that you wish you could have back. NC State now 4-1 and one on the season, 0-1 and one in the ACC. Coming up on this week's show, more analysis from Coach Dorn, also a feature on the spirit of the Wolfpack. Plus, Mark Thomas, as always, he gets coached up. Stay with us. This is the Dave Dorn Show. of everything has gone up dramatically over the last 75 years. With one exception, keeping electricity affordable. That's the power of your co-op membership. Learn more at togetherwesave.com. North Carolina's Touchstone Energy Cooperatives, looking out for you. This is the Ford F-150, and this changes everything. Get a 2015 F-150 with 0 for 72, or get up to 92.35 total savings, only at your Carolina Ford dealer. Our farm is a family business. Most hog farms are family farms. I've been around the farm all my life. When I graduated from college, I just decided this was what I wanted to do. She has come in to the family business. She'd rather be down here than anywhere else. We take care of our land. Our land's what makes our living. Our hogs are well taken care of. It works. We make it work. She loves what she does, and she gives it 150%. I'm Megan Spence, and I'm a North Carolina hog farmer. Execute the plan, persevere, stick together, and be violent on the field. Everybody understand that? Bring your gift to the field today, man. Windy, damp day at Carter-Finley Stadium for the ACC opener. Louisville knocks off NC State 
20 to 13. Welcome back to the show with the head coach of the Wolfpack, Dave Doran. I'm Tony Haynes. As we mentioned up top, State saw its seven game winning streak come to an end. A common thread in that winning streak, coach, was the fact that the Wolfpack really ran the football well. Louisville held the pack to 45 yards rushing in this football game. The Cardinals have impressive personnel, but was there anything they were doing scheme wise to shut down your run game? Well, they were packing the box, obviously. Uh, I thought that their front played well. Um, we didn't create the same kind of holes, and, and we had a lot of lost yardage, too. I mean, we did gain more than that, but the lost yardage plays hurt us. They had 13 plays, I believe, in our backfield, and when that happens, you're going to have a hard time mm -hmm. getting the numbers you want in the run game. You know, one thing NC State did through the first four games, it stayed on schedule offensively. I look back at the stat sheet. In this game, NC State had 16 first down plays. Two of them went for 67 yards. The other 14 first down plays, the Wolfpack averaged only 1.5 yards. In what ways did that change the equation for your offense? Well, I mean, anytime you're looking at third and seven and third and 10, I mean, it's gonna be difficult. And uh, I think, you know, going back through it, we were 100% and we were third and three to six. But above that, I think we only converted one or two times. And, you know, you can't put yourself in those situations. We gotta be able to uh, obviously get three or more on first and 10 on a regular basis. You know, Jacoby Brissett has really spoiled us the last couple of years. He does have that interception free streak up to 217 now, but you said it after the game. He had some throws he'd like to have back. Louisville's good defensively, and he had a lot of third and long situations. But uh, with the weather, was it a tough day to throw and catch? It wasn't ideal, for sure. Uh, I don't think either team threw the football well. I mean, there were a lot of drops by them as well, um, you know. but. You know, I know he's not going to make an excuse, and, and I'm not going to either. I mean, there's certain things that we have to be able to do in, in certain situations, and, you know, he's one of many, and, and so am I, where we could have all done a little bit better. Louisville quarterback Lamar Jackson, a freshman, really athletic. He showed that off, especially in the first half. He finished with 121 total yards on the ground, 68 of them coming on just one play for yeah. a touchdown. But still, your defense held the cards to only – three second half points. What kind of effective adjustments did you make for that second half? Um, well, we didn't make mistakes that we made in the first half and we, we executed on third down in the second half really well other than the two scramble uh, conversions. I don't know if they had one. And, uh, you know, I think in the first half we started fast defensively. I mean, there were two back-to-back -back three and outs. And then uh, you know, after the fumble by Ramos, we gave up that long run and, and uh, I kind of took us off schedule a little bit and the guys recovered and offensively we were only out there 23 snaps so they played a lot more football in that first half because of our third down defense. You know in the first half coach it seemed like Louisville would change up his tempo sometimes they'd huddle sometimes they'd line up quickly there were a couple of times where they snapped the ball very quick mm -hmm. was that an issue for your defense at first? I think change of tempo is more difficult than always fast or always mm -hmm. slow um, and they were going fast quite a bit, you know, to keep us uh, from substituting in and out in different packages. And we're going to see that throughout the year. You know, for the most part, we handled it well. Uh, obviously, the one time we didn't was the big run. Well, win or lose, I know you feel like your team should learn from every game day mm -hmm. experience. What are some of the lessons will be learned from this game? Well, I think there's just missed opportunities that mm -hmm. we're going to be disappointed with when we watch the film with the guys today. And I know they're down about it. And, you know, we're not going to lay on the ground very long. we got to jump up and get going. we got a short week. Short week. Road trip to Virginia Tech coming up on Friday. The Wolfpack falls to Louisville 20-13, to the final from Carter-Finley State. It's a short week. You don't have time to feel sorry for yourself. Everybody hear me? Yes, sir. Nobody does. Nobody's happy. Everyone's angry. So we're going to go fix it. We're going to get right back on the track. We just try to, you know, call the right play and just do what we can do. I mean, it didn't turn out good for us, but we just got to keep keep on playing. You know, it was, uh, you know, getting a lot of uh, pressure on our guards. But, I mean, it happens. You know, we just got to move on. Uh, get ready for Virginia Tech next week. I mean, we knew it was going to be a tough game, the fourth quarter game. Uh, we just tried to come out strong, and it just didn't turn out that way. We knew that it was a good team for creating turnovers, but, uh, I mean, it happens. Uh, we just got to learn from it and just keep it moving. You know, we wasn't really converting on third downs as much as we normally do. Uh, defense was on the field a little bit longer. Uh, you know, we, we normally got a good time of possession, but it just, it just wasn't apparent today. Here's Brissett getting the shotgun snap and dumps it out left side to Samuel. Samuel 15, 10, 5, still moving. He hit the pylon, touchdown, stay. I mean, I don't think it's difficult. You play defense for a reason. And I mean, it's fun to go out there and get three and outs. And I mean, that's what we, we tried to do. And I think we did for the most part. Now, we should have played better in the first half. I mean, 
I don't think there's any moral victories on our team. When we just can come back and try to play, you know, hard for the next game. I think we just got to go out there and, and, you know, be more focused from the start to the finish. Bonifon with a handoff, and he's met and dropped in his own backfield. All the way back to the 45-yard line. Arius Moore got there first. Okay, this is a big kickoff return here uh, by Naheem. And... Uh, and he does a nice job of, of making some people miss, but he's got some good blocks. If you watch uh, throughout the return, you're going to see some guys straining for him throughout the play. And uh, on the right side, starting with Dexter Wright, I think you can see number 34. Does a nice job staying on his guy. Riley Nicholson, um, Troy Vincent over here on the right side. And Naheem's great about hitting the north and south, which he does, and then making a guy miss. And he just bounces off of a guy. and. You can see on the left-hand side there, Niles Clark is working hard for him. Uh, not sure if he should have kept running right there and just outran him, probably should have, but you know, felt like he had a cutback. Huge play, um, get a face mask penalty on top of it right there and uh, scored on third down afterwards. So that was a big momentum play for the team. Entering the week, NC State quarterback Jacoby Brissett led the ACC in passing efficiency with a rating of 170.3. Did you know the last NC State quarterback to lead the ACC in passing efficiency for an entire season was none other than Russell Wilson? The current Seahawks signal caller finished the 2010 campaign with an efficiency rating of 133.9. What are people going to think of our new buttermilk crispy chicken? Let's find out. It's probably the best sandwich I've ever had. It's super crispy, but it's also really juicy. So would you guys come back? Yep. Yeah, of course, definitely. Well, here's our car. The location is on the back. It's McDonald's? What? What? <laughs> what? Oh, get out of here. No way. <laughs> Wait, seriously? Try some buttermilk crispy chicken. It's right around the corner at McDonald's. Buttermilk? <laughs> <laughs> At 36, Jo was concerned about having her first child. A specialist saw something on an ultrasound and recommended a difficult choice. Jo came to Rex for a second opinion. She was evaluated and reassured at the UNC Specialty Women's Center at Rex. Not long after, Levi was born. It's a brand new day. It's our favorite kind of story. Sun is shining. One with a happy it's beginning. A brand new day. Rex Healthcare. The best part about being a member of a Touchstone Energy Cooperative is that it's your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. Learn more about the power of your co-op membership at togetherwesave.com. North Carolina's Touchstone Energy Cooperatives, looking out for you. With Dave Doran, I'm Tony Haynes. Welcome back to the Dave Doran Show. When you think of the NC State mascot, the Wolf Pack, you think of tenacity, you think of toughness. And for your football team coach, it'll take some toughness, resiliency to bounce back from a loss and move on and play on the road. Do you think your young team is starting to develop those characteristics? Well, I saw a lot of pain in their eyes last night in the locker room, you know, and I, I know that hurt, um, not just to lose, but to feel like, you know, there's some things you could have done to flip the score pretty easily. So, you know, we'll have to get our arms around those guys, get everything fixed. I know they'll bounce back. They're competitive guys, and, and they know that this next one's a big game. What's the spirit of the Wolfpack all about? Take a look. Attack. Just sit back, read your prey, study them, and then just attack. Just go full out. Never letting up on the guys. Days up the middle, he's got a clear field. 
go hard every week, no matter what. Quarterback keeper, no. Running right at them. Loads over the middle of the end zone, caught, touchdown state. You know, you, you, you're hungry. You know what I mean? Go get, go get your food. I think the team stays hungry and motivated throughout the season uh, by constantly wanting to improve. Um, you know, wanting to be better than last week. If we play every game, like we really want to go out there and win, you know, take every rep serious, take every practice, you know, prepare the same way during the week. When you go on the field and you, and you battle with your brothers, you know, you're already, like, focused and you know exactly what you're doing when you go on full speed. Treating every uh, team like, you know, they're the best team in the country and always practicing, you know, like someone's coming to take a job. Just doing the little things that, that matter the most that, that will show up on Saturday. The athleticism of the Wolfpack is showing up here early in this game. Satisfaction is a dangerous word. You never want to you know, stay satisfied. Nobody is ever um, just so good that they can't get better at something. You can always, you know, become a better player, whether it's in the film room, you know, whether it's in the weight room, whether it's on the field. We're always striving for perfection, and we'll settle for excellence. The handoff Samuels around the right side. The goal line is in. Touchdown, Wolfpack. Seeing all the people that, that come to the stadium, my parents, the, the fans, my teammates, just seeing the love that they have for this team and the love that they have for me and seeing me succeed, that just motivates me to get better every day. I think I always try and take the field with a sense that my team is down and to uh, be the best player I can be. I'm not only for myself, but for the team, for the school, for the community, for my family. The strength of the Wolf is the pack. Trying to do everything to you know, help the team be better. Just that drive, um, not let the guy beside you down. I consider this team a family. Um, I know anytime I'm out on the field that uh, I got 10 other guys depend on me to do what I'm supposed to do. You have each other's back, you know what I mean? It's a foxhole mentality. You're gonna fight for them. Seeing my teammates and seeing, you know, the, the, the look on their face when we get a win. I know they want the same thing, so it's just gonna make me even more hungry to want to win the championship. I think that's what you need when building the program. You just need togetherness. NC State is on a roll. Throughout the season, you just uh, give yourself a goal. Be goal-oriented. Everybody wants to win the ACC championship, but you got to win the next game to get there. The ACC title has been won here in many, many years, and I think you can kind of compare that to a hunter stalking his prey. I mean, because that's our main goal. I mean, if we can do that, then that will really change things around for this program. I think if we just keep um, keep fighting, then eventually that um, the ACC title will come to us. You know, the deer will get tired and fall, and um, if we just stay persistent, stay focused, then um, it's ours the game. It also takes uh, all the members of the pack to take it down, and uh, not just one. That's how we do it. We're hunting. This week I'm getting coached up by quarterback coach here at NC State, George Barlow. Coach, your quarterbacks have gotten off to a solid start. What do you like from them early on? Uh, what I like about what they're doing now is they're playing, playing with a lot of confidence and what the kids call they're, they're trying to play with a lot of swag. I'm really impressed with the effort that I'm getting on every Saturday and, and more impressive is they're trying to play with the technique that we're teaching every day. So I've been, I've been happy with their play so far. Yeah, when you talk about the, the big plays and, and you're coaching them up, is that more of a mental state or is it technique? Um, most of the time it winds up being technique, but at the same time, they still have to have the mental, mental capacity to come back and play, and play it you know, with confidence every time, even when that big play happens. Because that's kind of our existence, because if you play defensive back, at some point you're going to get beat. It's just how you b bounce back. And our kids are doing a good job of bouncing back and then correcting the technique and getting it done the next time. The, the, as tight end, I know where I'm going. I, I can operate in smaller spaces, but you guys, I mean, you got a lot of room to roam, a lot of running around. Yeah. You guys got to cover a lot of ground. It, I need you to get me coached up on covering some ground. All right, let's do it. Okay, the drill we're going to work on is we're going to work on your transition, and then we're going to work on your eyes with the same drill. So the first transition we're going to work on is a 45-degree break out of your pedal, and then we're going to work on your eyes and the cone. We're going to pretend the cone is the man, and your eyes are going to go to the man. And once you get to the man, I'm going to flip you the ball, and then you're going to also work on your finish, the interception part. All right, so being where my eyes are, typically I'm looking at the quarterback. Yep, initially you're going to be looking at me as a quarterback, and then once I tell you to break, you're going to work on your transition. It's going to be a right foot plant, left foot lead, 
45 degree break and now your eyes go from me to the man okay, okay. and what a lot of ki kids make the mistake of as soon as they break they're still looking at the quarterback and now they're drawing circles instead of taking a direct angle to oh, the man oh that's a good point all, all right, right that's a good point so yeah now I, can, let, 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 let me get let me get a light walk through through this make sure i'm all doing right. the technique all right, right we got we got to work with your stance first yeah. oh, okay. a little bit too wide just okay. shoulder width apart shoulder width. All right, stagger stance uh -huh. again. Get a little bit of a forward lean. There right. you go, right there. And now, when you first step, you're going to step with your right foot okay. first. So your weight's going to go to your left and right. Right. And pedal, pedal, yeah. pedal. Yeah. And then when I tell you to break, now you're going to break to your left. It's going to be a right foot plant, left foot lead. And my lead step goes okay. directly at the cone, and my eyes go back to the cone. You're going to get all the way to the cone, yeah. and now you'll look for the ball, gotcha. and I'll flip it to you. I want left foot lead because I don't want any wasted steps. Don't I want, want wasted eat. steps. And what we talk to them about is yep. direct angles because now with that lead step, once I right foot plant, left foot lead, I don't want to draw circles because yep. it's not a direct angle. Again, when we make plays, it's a matter of inches. And I, we want to make sure. I feel like I'm on Dancing that. with the Stars trying there to get is. the, the box down. You got to have your feet right yep, if you're going to dance. Right. All right, here we go. Here All we go. Right. Yep. Here we go. Pedal. <laughs> Break. <laughs> Uh, again, uh, oh, I now, this is what I do with my kids. I don't throw you the ball because yep. you're looking at me. You're looking breaking at you. to the man. Gotta, gotta to get the man. To the cone. Here good we go. stance, Let's good go. start. Here we go. Pedal. Break. Eyes to the man. There it is. Okay, Run through. Here we go. Let's get there another. It is. Let's get another. All right, now we can go the other way. We right. can go the other way. Now we're going to your right. So now what we're going to do is be left foot plant, right foot lead. Right, here, here we go. go. Yes. Here we go. Pedal. Break. Eyes to the man. Eyes to the man. Flip you the ball. Finish. Very good. You know, the crazy thing is, my sense, because I'm looking for that ball, is always to want to stay on you. Yep. You're saying I'm looking for that man because... Yep. Because that's where they're throwing the ball. And again, what I tell the kids, if you see the ball thrown, you're going to see the ball caught. And that's not a good thing. Wow, okay. okay. So what we want to do is you're breaking to the man. Once you secure the man, then I can look at the quarterback to right. find the ball and so, get the interception. Uh, we can go, to, back, we can go back to go. your left. Yeah. So hit, go, push, break. Break to the man, break to the man. Finish right there. All right, we'll get another one the other way. See. All right, now on this one, I'm yeah. gonna correct you even more. Now, as you go, don't break down at the man. You're gonna run through him because I want to attack the ball. Okay. Here we go. Said hit, go, push, <laughs> break, break into the man, break into the man, run through. There you go. Catch it. Put it away. Hide tight. Go Woo. score. What are people gonna think of our new buttermilk crispy chicken? Let's find out. It's probably the best sandwich I've ever had. It's super crispy, but it's also really juicy. So would you guys come back? Yep. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Well, here's our car. The location is on the back. Okay. It's McDonald's? What? What? <laughs> what? Oh, get out of here. No way. Wait, seriously? Try some buttermilk crispy chicken. It's right around the corner at McDonald's. Buttermilk? <laughs> <laughs> This is the Ford F-150, the only pickup with a high-strength, military-grade aluminum alloy body bolted to a high-strength steel frame. It's also a wake-up call for every full-size pickup in its class. No body rust, most towing, best payload, highest gas mileage. This is the Ford F-150, and every other truck is history. Now get an F-150 with zero for 60 or get up to 92.35 in total savings only at your Carolina Ford dealer. Impressive images of the technology we employ with dramatic success at Rex Cancer Center. Or footage of our team of cancer specialists and the many examples why people choose Rex for excellence in healthcare. But the images that inspire us most are ones like this. It's a brand new day. The sun is shining. Rex it's UNC Cancer Care, chosen day. for excellence. Coming up this weekend, C-State will go on the road for the third time this season as the Wolfpack visits Virginia Tech. That's a Friday night game. It begins at 8 p.m. Wolfpack Sports Network pregame coverage from Lane Stadium starts at 6 o'clock. Dave Dorn Radio Show returns to Wednesday night this week. It airs from 7 to 8 p.m. and originates from the Backyard Bistro in Raleigh.
the Week 6 Scattering Report and Game 2 of the AC schedule for the Pack means they're going on the road to a Friday night game in Blacksburg, Virginia, take on the Virginia Tech Hokies. And whenever we talk about Virginia Tech, Beamer ball, you know what that usually means? They're gonna play big special teams. They're gonna put their best players out there on punt, uh, coverage, kickoff return, the best players, and they're gonna make some plays. Beamer ball also means running the football, and playing defense. So that's where we're gonna start on the defensive side of the ball. Although we're showing them lined up in a 4-3 defense, they line up in a lot of different ways. They move in a lot of different directions. Line stunts are big. They line stunt all the time. They bring these safeties into the box all the time. They're big blitz, more run blitz than they are coverage blitz. And they tell these corners on the outside, we want you to play man to man, play tough. The two guys we're gonna focus on, Chuck Clark, the free safety. He's a he's leading tackler and he's really good at that because a lot of times he's left on an island to protect everything. And then the left outside linebacker, Deion Clark, they do left and right backers. They don't switch sides, but number 40, Deion Clark, senior, the most experienced guy, he's the leader for this defense. So you expect him to make a lot of plays. Then on the offensive side of the ball, they've struggled this year, but a lot of it has to do with injury. You got Michael Brewer, the starting quarterback, breaks his collarbone against the Ohio State Buckeyes in the opening game. In the door walks Brendan Motley, number nine. We put him under center here, but he likes to go shotgun a lot because they want him to run the football. He's He's one of their leading rushers, and obviously they're trying to open up the passing game as well to this guy, Isaiah Ford. He is their top guy, number one, plays split in, doesn't mind press coverage, 6'2", kind of more of a physical wide receiver. That's the main guy we're looking for in the passing game, but you got to look for number nine, Brendan Motley, to run the football. And that's our scouting report of the Virginia Tech Hokies. Good luck to the pack. All right, Mark, thank you very much. NC State's about to go to Lane Stadium in Blacksburg for the first time since 2009. It's always a tough place to play. Adding to the challenge this week, it's a short week, Coach. You'll travel Thursday, play on Friday night. How will the short week impact your team's preparation? Well, we'll have to be smart about what we do on the field. You know, we can't take the same number of reps, uh, but we do need to understand what we're trying to get done and accomplished. And you know, so the guys are going to have to do a really good job, you know, staff-wise of putting together a good plan but not making it where we need that extra day of practice to execute it. Virginia Tech comes in at 2-3. and three. The Hokies have lost back-to-back -back games, including a 17-13 to 13 decision at home against Pittsburgh. Among other things, on Saturday, Tech was held to only 100 yards. Now, they're used to winning football games at home. Did you expect to see a desperate Virginia Tech team on Friday night? Well, I know that they're, they're a proud football program and uh, very well coached and have a lot of tradition. Uh, they're going to battle. It's going to be a four quarter game. We expect it to be and you know all the elements, the crowd noise and everything else. Uh, I thought Pittsburgh really did a good job attacking them last week and we got to get back to doing what we do like we did in the second half on defense and offensively taking care of the football and just getting back to the fundamentals of the game. NC State Virginia Tech on Friday night of course next week same time same station. We'll be here for a recap on the Dave Doran Show. See you then. Double pass going to Samuels, right side of the five, into the end zone. Touchdown, Wolfpack. A cutback. It's a sprint to the pylon. Touchdown, Matthew Dave. Go take what you want. Are you ready to hit the fun? Everything you got, man. Everything you got. You got to focus. You got to play with heart. Here comes the rush. Hennessy throws. Picked off by Fernandez at the 30-yard line. How about that Wolfpack? The Dave Doran Show has been presented by North Carolina's Touchstone Energy Cooperatives. Proud to sponsor Wolfpack Athletics. And by Coke Zero. Real Coke taste. Zero calories. Everything we do, we're family. All right? Pick up the pieces. Come back tomorrow with the right attitude. Let's fix it. Let's go get Virginia Tech. Everybody got it? Get up in here. Let's go. Family on